Whether you're a home improvement DIYer or a serious woodworker, you could use a great set of sawhorses. In this video, we're going to show you how to make this clever design. What I really like about it is that you can make four of them from a single sheet of plywood. You'll find the plans for them at woodsmithplans.com. The other thing that I like about them is that they're pretty low to the ground. So when I'm working on a project and I set it on top, it's at the perfect height for working on it. But these sawhorses have a secret. If you need a slightly higher work surface, the design allows you to stack them together. So now you have a taller work surface and another way to use them. I think you'll find that these sawhorses will come in just as handy at your home as they do around here in our shop. The template I use to create the ends of the sawhorse starts out as just a quarter inch piece of hardboard. Now I've already cut it to size to match the width and the height of the ends of the sawhorses. Now with it cut to size, I'm ready to do a little bit of layout work to define the shape of the ends. Now that starts out with laying out the angled sides of the template. Now once that's complete, I can focus on the notch and the tab that used to interlock the ends. Now the thing with the notch and the tab is they need to be identical in size and shape. So to help me out with that, I'm going to use a little template like this to lay everything out. Now it can be a challenge to align the pattern at the top and bottom so the tab and notch align. To help out with that, I've drawn a center line on the template as well as the pattern. I can just use that to align my center lines and the top edge and trace around the pattern. Now with the notch complete, I can move the pattern to the bottom and lay out the tab. And finally, I'll lay out the feet at the bottom of the template. Now with the template layout complete, I'm ready to cut it to final shape. Now the tricky part is cutting the angled sides of the template. For the sawhorses to stack correctly, they need to be smooth and identical. Now to help me out with that, I'm going to use a simple sled like this one. Now the sled is nothing more than a wide base with a stop screwed along the back edge. To use it, to make the cut, I'm just going to raise my saw blade and then I'm going to set the template in place on the sled. Now all I need to do is make sure I align the back corner of the template with the edge of the base and I'm ready to make the cut. Now with the edge aligned, I can make my first pass. Once the first pass is complete, I'll flip the template over. After aligning the back corner with the edge of the base again, I can make my second cut. Well, that takes care of the angled sides of the template. Now I can remove the remaining waste to create the notch and the tab at the bottom. And I'll do that over at the workbench. Now the first step is to remove most of the waste with a jigsaw, staying just outside the layout lines. Once I remove most of the waste, I'll use some files and a little bit of sandpaper to sand right up to the layout lines. Well, with the template complete, I'm ready to put it to use to create the ends for all the sawhorses. Now this template's going to serve two functions. First, I'm going to use it to lay out all the end pieces, and then later, at the router table, I'll use it to trim all the parts to identical size and shape. Now the first step in this process is easy. It's just creating a long strip of plywood to cut all the end pieces from. And then I'll start my layout at one end. Now what's important here is that the width of the plywood matches the overall height of the ends, or the template in this case. And then I simply trace around the template and end up with a pattern like this. Now, to create all those ends from one strip of plywood, it's important that I flip the template over to do the next layout. And I want to make sure I leave a small gap between the parts so I can rough cut the pieces to size. Well, I'm ready to do all the layout. Well, I've completed all the layout work for the end pieces on the long blank, and I've begun rough cutting the ends to rough shape. Now, this is truly a rough cut. I'll be trimming it to size later at the router table, so right for now, I can stay well outside my layout lines. Now, once I've cut all the end pieces to rough shape, I can remove the waste for the notch and the tabs on all the pieces. Well, I'm ready to start removing that waste. I'll just clamp it in place and make the cuts. Well, I've finished cutting all the ends to rough shape. And as you can see, I stayed well outside the layout lines. But that's not a problem, because I can use the template 
to trim them all to final shape so they're all identical. Now to do that, I'm gonna stick the template down with double-sided tape. Just remove these. Only thing that's important here is I line up the ends, kind of get close to my layout lines. That looks pretty good. And then stick the template in place. Now with the template secured to the workpiece, I can trim the workpiece so it matches the template. Now to do that, I'm gonna use a flush trim bit installed in the router table. I've already adjusted the height of the bit so that the bearing is gonna ride against the edge of the template. Well, with everything set, I'm ready to route. Now trimming the workpiece flush is just a matter of pushing it into the spinning bit until the bearing contacts the template, and then routing completely around the edge of the template. Well, that takes care of shaping one of the end pieces. Now all I need to do is remove the template, attach it to the next one, and repeat the process. And in the end, I'll have identically shaped end pieces. Well, Brian, using a template to route all these pieces is a great way to make sure they're exactly the same shape. That's for sure. Now, you're going to have to spend a little time creating the template, but it takes all the guesswork out of creating the ends. It does, and it's definitely worth it, because when the ends are shaped exactly the same, the sawhorses will stack up just like they're supposed to. Now, there is one little problem with template routing. You're using a round bit to create a square corner. Right. Now, that means things aren't going to interlock quite the way they should at the start. So you're gonna to have to take a file and square up those corners. But once that's done, you know these end panels are almost ready. All we're gonna to need to do is cut a dado and a rabbit in each one. And those connect the shelf and the top to make sure these sawhorses are very sturdy. Well, what do you say we head over and get those cut so we can get these sawhorses finished up? Well, Dave, with the sawhorse ends all cut to shape, then there's a couple of more things to do, and that is to cut some dados and some rabbits. Well, you know, and we've got quite a few of them to cut, but since all of them are identical, it's really pretty easy once we take care of a few setups. Well, the first setup is to install a dado set in the table saw. Well, and we're using three-quarter inch thick plywood, but that dado isn't just stacked for a three-quarter inch thick cut. Okay, this is always the problem. Three quarter inch plywood is just a little bit less than three quarters of an inch. So I had to set up the dado set, the chippers, and the shims inside to match the thickness of this plywood exactly. Well, then we've got one more special item, and that's a long auxiliary face that we've added to the rip fence. Right, and that'll help because as we push the wide end of this base through the dado cut, we need to support it all the way to the end of the cut. Well, with the dado set in place and the fence set up, now I can cut a dado across the center for the shelf, then adjust the fence over, and cut a rabbit at the top. Well, Dave, I've cut the dados and the rabbits for the shelves and the tops. And you'll notice that the top and the shelves have beveled edges to match the slope of those ends. Right. So to make them, I've gone ahead and cut each piece to exact length, but I've left them a hair wide. Then I tilted the saw blade to 15 degrees, and I can bevel the first edge of all the tops. Well, this assembly line style is the way to go. So I'll start by going ahead and making the bevel pass on the outside edge of each top. Then I can readjust the fence and bevel the opposite edge sneaking up on the final width. Okay, Dave, let's go ahead and check the fit of the top. You can see those beveled edges, nice and flush on each side. Well, this system works great, and we can do the same thing for the shelf. That is, bevel rip one side, then sneak up on the cut on the other side. And then we just need to do one more thing. Let's create grooves for the supports that run between the ends. Right, and to do that, I'll switch back to the dado blade, cut two grooves in the top, and then cut another groove centered on the shelf. Well, Dave, I've got these grooves all cut. There's two in the top and then one centered in the shelf. Well, and with those done, the sawhorses are gonna fit together great, but there's one more thing we need to do. We've gotta create a recess in both ends of each top. Well, that little recess creates enough space for the tab to fit in when these interlocking sawhorses fit together. Well, now we can lay out the location of it, but rather than measure, 
it's easier just to go ahead and bring one of the tops in place, get everything nice and flush, there we are. and then mark where it intersects the end panel. And then we'll extend these marks on the top, and then we can set up to actually make these cuts. Well, why don't you get stuff cleared out of the way, and I'll finish marking it out. Well, Don, I've gone ahead and laid out each edge of that recess. Good, and while you were doing that, I went ahead and set up the miter gauge with a tall fence and a stop. And that stop is positioned so when we put the top in place, move it up to make the cut, it cuts right on your mark. So we'll make one cut on one edge, then we'll flip the piece around and make another cut, and then slide the piece over and clean out the waste. Okay, Dave, I've got the notches cut in the ends of the top. Well, and while you were doing that, I went ahead and got the shelf in place between the ends. Okay, so now we're ready for the top. We'll just put it in there, Get that flush for you, and go ahead and screw it down. Well, and once the top's in place, we can go ahead and determine the proper length for those supports. Well, that's it. You don't want to pre-cut these according to a plan. This is a case where you may have cut the rabbits and the dados a little deeper, a little shallower than you originally thought. Right. So rather than risk cutting these too short, you're better off to cut to fit. So I've got one that's a little extra long. I'll just hold it in place between the ends. We can mark this and then take it over to the table saw and cut it to an exact size. Well, and then once we get these supports in place, we've got saw horses that are ready to go to work. Woodsmithplans.com. Hundreds of professional, high quality woodworking plans right at your fingertips. Every single plan is presented as an easy to download digital package that includes pages of step-by-step -step instructions full color photos, illustrations, and exploded views, retail sources for hardware and supplies, plus a cutting diagram and materials list. Many plans offer handy video overviews and guides. Plus, we're proud to offer our plans in both standard and metric. Everything is here, from gorgeous heirloom furniture projects to handy shop projects and upgrades, clever, cost-effective storage solutions, as well as weekend projects and accessories that are great for gifts. All fully searchable and categorized for easy browsing. Woodsmithplans.com, everything you need for building fine woodworking projects.